Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to the last game of 1905 Haupt Turnier in Barman. So the tournament already finished and Akiba Rubinstein and Oldrich Duras got the exec for first prize. And um, they wanted to, uh, you know, uh, figure out who is better player, so they play uh, playoffs. Uh, two games, uh, one disappeared uh, from the history, we don't have the record of that game, but this one we have. So as white, Oljich Duras, and by chess metrics, um, his ranking is 2523, pretty strong player, of course, and Akiba Rubinstein, uh, his ranking is 2531, and he play as black. And if you want to see the first game where Akiba Rubinstein actually won, there is the link, so click um, that link and after this um, video you can watch also the first game where Akiba Rubinstein won in the tournament. Uh, okay, without further ado, let's jump into the game. However, la last thing I would like to say, I would like to, you know, give you the warning. If you are not the fan of uh, Endgame, don't even bother to, to watch this um, uh, this game. It's it's really uh, craziness and madness on the board in the in the end game. So um, after a really boring um, uh, beginning, uh, opening and the middle game, then the ending is uh, really rich and uh, probably educational. So uh, let's have a fun on the board. Duras open with e4. We have e6 by Rubinstein, a French defense on the board. And Rubinstein was known um, as the big fan and strong player of the French defense. He has his own systems, which uh, he had a lot of successes. And some of the variations are even called the Rubinstein variation in the French defense. So um, really interesting stuff. d4 and d5. Oljich Duras is not interested in any, you know, Rubinstein variation so he go for exchange um, the most boring and symmetrical variation bishop on d3 knight f6 knight f3 bishop on d6 and we have a castle by white and by black bishop on g5 and bishop on g4 so everything is very symmetrical very typical for the uh, exchange variation of french and here we have knight c3. Usually um, white or black play a different structure, but knight on c3 uh, is also okay move. And now we have c6. So um, c6 is of course more, um, you know, uh, popular move. And here we have queen on d2. So inviting black to actually exchange um, the bishop uh, and as the compensation they would have the uh, double pawn um, of white. Uh, however, there is some danger as the um, uh, G file would be semi open and uh, white would have the initiative and, uh, you know, um, the attack on the black position. So uh, Rubinstein was not interested. He just developed knight B to D7. And here we have knight on E2, queen on C7 and here a knight on G3, rook a to e8 and rook a to e1. Uh, so this structure of black is very typical for exchange. So uh, these pawns and this battery uh, also uh, very typical. If both of sides play the same, that's actually can, you know, sign the draw and then it's nothing going ha to happen. Rook e6 was played by Rubinstein. Probably he could exchange the rooks uh, and after um, that he could go actually for this as uh, g takes on f3. Rook e8 would force actually white to um, exchange the rooks as well. If not, then uh, would have to, uh, you know, um, waste a lot of moves to uh, to get this rook on the semi-open file and, and black would just dominate on the only open file of the, of the board. So um, that would be the position um, which uh, Akiba Rubinstein actually didn't want to play. So he played rook on e6, so he said, okay, I want to double the rooks, what are you gonna do about that? 
and here Duras just play knight on h4 so creating some uh, interesting position on the king side rook f on e8 as planned and now we have knight h on f5 uh, and here Rubinstein just exchange the rooks and here we have queen on e1 uh, bishop on f4 so Rubinstein want to exchange more pieces we have bishop takes on f4 queen takes on f4 and now queen on e7 so something starts to going on and actually there is some threat um, for example attack on the f7 uh, so black should do something about that Rubinstein choose to play g6 uh, we have queen on d8 and knight on f8 uh, queen on f6 so picking up the knight but now we have bishop on f5 knight on f5 and here rubinstein just um check the the, the king uh, on c1 bishop on f1 and here we have g takes on f5 h4 by white with some mating ideas uh, but they are quite slow so we have knight on e6 actually preventing that queen on f5 and here we have queen on b2 uh, so now there is a plan of rubinstein to play um, the ending um, where he has the knight against the bishop uh, the problem here is that the black has actually all the pawns on the light square and the white has the light square bishop. Uh, however, um, the structure of pawns of white are, you know, preferred to be attacked by the knight. So um, this is why it's going to be very interesting uh, ending. We have bishop on d3, so now creating the mating ideas. Um, and the way to prevent this is, of course, queen on c1 with check. We have a king on h2. And now this knight on e6 is very handy as it lets Rubinstein to exchange the queen. So queen takes on f4, knight takes on f4, and now n bishop is attacked. So if it's taken, then of course black would win very easily with this attack of two pawns um, on the queen side. So bishop move to f1. One. Here we have knight on e6 attacking d4 pawn and c3. King g7, king g3. And here we have the solution uh, of the problem I mentioned before of this, uh, you know, light squares um, uh, pawn chain. So c5. Uh, and now the threat is, of course, double attack on the d4 pawn and is defended only once, cannot be defended more. So uh, pawn has to take on c5. We have knight takes on c5. Uh, and here very strong plan for Olgich Duras. White stand may be slightly better, but black has clear plan. Attack these two pawns and you know just just take both of them. So uh, that would be huge advantage for black and probably easy win. So Duras has to have some plan and he play king on f4, centralizing the king. That is uh, actually very good move. And um, after this game is finished, there are a lot, a tons of uh, analysis of this game. Some of them even say uh, King F6 could be played by Rubinstein. But actually, after King on E3 and Knight E4, C4 could be could be played. Uh, Knight D6. And here we would have bishop on d3, very interesting move, attacking the h7, but also controlling the f5 uh, square. So uh, this knight actually uh, couldn't come here without the problem after c5. This is the threat. So the knight would have to move somewhere. And, and here white would have even the, the moves where they could get the, the passed pawn. So uh, a pretty interesting move, a bishop on d d3. So uh, that would be forced. And after bishop takes on h7, b5, g4, and b4, bishop c2, because now that was the threat. Uh, of course, so uh, this would be the ending. So Akiba Rubinstein didn't actually want to go for that and probably he was right.
But Rubinstein didn't like this line, uh, so actually he play a knight on e4 and this is actually recommended by the engine he attacks c3 pawn so uh, c4 is played this is another strong move um, by Olgi Duras and he has some deeper plan which Rubinstein probably missed in his calculation he just play knight on d2 so uh, he, here is the thing, uh, the best move uh, knight e2 probably would be played uh, by white uh, and then after knight on c4 a bishop f3 and d4 could be played and of course king on e4 doesn't work because knight d2 and king d d4 and um, uh, the bishop would be taken and this is of course win by uh, after king h6 uh, picking up the h4 uh, pawn this pawn on h uh, file would be you know faster than any other pawns on the board so uh, black would easily win so king on e4 wouldn't be possible here so probably bishop on b7 but black would have resources as f5 very strong move probably the only move which uh, would keep the black still in game uh, and of course this uh, this pawn can't be taken uh, because of d3 bishop f3 d2 king e4 knight b2 and uh, black would just uh, get the promotion so for example a4 um, promotion and black would stand better so for example king on d4 and uh, knight on f2 king c5 uh, king f6 and now if white would go for b5 that would be met with the knight on d3 and if the king goes on a6 then that would be the fork and if white lose this pawn of course they're gonna lose the game as they have to pick up the knight then they have to go and pick up the the pawn while uh, black would just you know uh, pick up these two pawns and um, h pawn would just win the game so king c6 would have to be played h5 king b7 knight d3 now king a7 and now knight c5 so hunting for this pawn and this pawn actually can't move a5 knight b3 attacking the pawn a6 knight c5 so you can actually remember that this knight always can stop the pawn if the pawn has to stop for for some reason for example if the king is on the way king on b6 knight on a6 king a6 king f5 and of, of course like i said before black would win so king definitely can take this f5 pawn uh, so bishop on a6 maybe knight b2 and now f3 uh, h5 and now this is the problem uh, white actually this is this is dead draw that is uh, nothing can be done actually uh, if white try to win then we would have d3 king h5 uh, and here we would have d2 bishop on e2 knight a4 very powerful move attacking these two squares so uh, bishop would have to move somewhere bishop on d1 knight c3 now bishop on c2 and after uh, picking up this pawn uh, black would just easily win and um, this uh, this bishop has to stay on this diagonal and black of course uh, can just uh, go on the c3 promote to the queen pick up the bishop and then this pawn would just promote the queen and win the game so uh that's not the option so after h5 g3 would have to be played or or some other move king f6 and here there are not many moves bishop f1 a5 a3 king a6 and this king actually can't move uh, because these pawns would be very very dangerous and very fast so uh, that, that would be probably the end so uh, bishop on b7 we, we are talking about this bishop b7 um, but, but it doesn't uh, win for white so white would try maybe in this position play um, bishop on e2 attacking the knight 
but here we would have in similar fashion knight on b2 king e4 now can be played d3 and after just exchanging all the stuff we would have just uh the draw so uh all of these lines would be drawish and uh, the game would just end it and you know nobody would be interested in you know um uh, writing about that and analyzing in the books about the end games uh, so, for example, king on g6, g4, h5, um, f3, uh, exchanging on uh, g4, and here, for example, f5 could be played. h5 with check, king g5, and white has to decide something, but uh, actually king d4, king g5, king d5, king h5, king d6, king g5, king c7, b5 now to win some tempi, uh, king c6, b4, king b5, and now king f5, king b4, king e6, king b5, king d7, king a6, king c6 now so there are option options always to go uh, on both directions and after king on a7 we would have king on b5 and of course it's another uh, you know drawish um, line so this is uh, what Akiba Rubinstein probably calculate after uh, after you know bishop on e2 in similar fashion could be bishop on d3 but actually in this position believe me or not but Olzich Duras play c takes on d5 very bold move knight on f1 by Rubinstein and here we have king on e5 so uh, now king can't move on f6 we have knight on d2 by Rubinstein and king on d6 so this is the plan this is the plan so uh white plan is you know to um, exchange this knight for this pawn pick up these two pawns and you know bring the uh, pawn on a file to the promotion and now feel free to pause the video right now and find a way how black can try to win this game while i enjoy my cup of tea Okay, ready? This is uh, this is quite insane stuff. So if you find king on f6, then congratulations, uh, you play as uh, Akiba Rubinstein, who is known as one of the best players of the you know endings, but actually in the rook endings or, or pawn endings. And uh, here uh, Akiba Rubinstein wasn't the you know perfect ma machine of endings yet. Uh, so he played king on f6 so uh, the bright carrier ahead of you however this is uh, not really the best move it's actually drawing move uh, knight e4 could be uh, really interesting and now king c7 for example and and it's interesting now the engine want to play knight on c3 and consider this as the best move uh, however, after d6 and knight b5 check, king d7 defending the, the pawn and knight d4, uh, king c8, we would have b5 and black would have um, these two pawns, uh, which would be, you know, some advantage on the queen side. So white would have to be very careful here. d7, now knight e6 so controlling um d8 square g4 and now believe me or not but black has only one move which still uh keep them in the game so feel free to pause the video i'm not gonna drink my tea anymore but you can actually pause the video as many times as possible because this game start to be really really complex so uh king f6 for example losing you know losing the game uh, for example f4 king e7 but now we would have f5 attacking the knight and if knight goes to d8 we would have f6 
6. And look at this. This king can't move anywhere. King d6, king d8, and white, of course, uh, winning. So uh, king f6 would not be possible. King g6 is actually the only move which keeps black in, you know, uh, in good position. And now after f4, we would have f5. But then h5 with check. And now again, uh, the king has to be moved on f6. If it's moved, for example, to f7, we would have g takes on f5, attacking the knight and of course winning the game. So uh, that would not be the option. Uh, so only king f6 was possible here. And after g5 with check, king f7 only now. And what would be planned for white now? So now feel free to pause the video and don't lose this game as white. This is really insane. There is only one move. So king on b7, this is the only move. And after a5, king c6, we would have b4. And here white have to find another move. It can be king d6, but h6 would be even better. And now after a4, it looks pretty scary, but actually king d6 is enough to draw the game. Look at this position. Black actually can't play b3. Can you believe in that? b3, b3, if black playing b3 is losing for black. It's really, it's losing for black. Look at this. g6 with check. h takes on g6. And now h7. And black actually can't um, defend both. If king on g7, then we would have king on e6. And now uh, black are just too slow. Uh, because we have the queen. Uh, now black would have the queen. And now we would have checkmate. So white would win. This is quite insane stuff. So can you believe that in this situation, b3 is losing and black has only option knight on d8. And that would be just a draw by threefold repetition. And if white try to win this time, for example, g6 to play the same, just king take can take on g6, uh, king e7, and of course, knight f7. Uh, black is easily winning. Now b3 is, of course, possible. So I hope you really enjoy uh, these lines and uh, you start to like the um, end games. And, uh, but I would like to show you this line, not because of these complicated variations, uh, knight e4 and uh, king on c7. As you see, white, if played perfectly, uh, they actually can draw that game. And uh, black have to play also perfectly to draw that game. There are a lot of traps and even small inaccuracy would cost the game. But actually black could play b5. And here after d6, b4, d7, black would have knight on c5. Uh, and here, if the, uh, you know, there is the promotion to queen, of course, black is winning by uh, forking the king and the queen. So that's a very interesting structure. And uh, white actually would have to take the knight. And knight is a very interesting story now. a5, knight on c6, and now b3 by black. a takes on b3, and knight takes on b3. And here king b6, a4. So if I didn't miss anything, uh, then Rubinstein would have the big chances to actually win this game as white still have to deal with this pawn and black are free to pick up these three pawns. So black would have the quite um, big chances to win that game. However, here in this position, Rubinstein didn't play a knight on e4. He played king on f6, like I told you. And here we have king on c7, knight e4, so uh, almost the, the same but different. d6, knight c5, 
d7 and now b5 can't be played b5 actually can't be played because now the queen would come with check so that was impossible now so rubinstein played knight on e6 with check king on b7 so now this advantage on the queen side is gone already but now we have king on e7 and king on c8 and here is another problem g4 is coming f4 is coming a uh, really really um, strong idea for white so black has to do something about that uh, h5 uh, seems like the best idea f5 would also work uh, but actually interesting thing that a lot of um, you know theoreticians uh, discuss if f5 is okay so uh, for example uh, there was some polish theoreticians uh, which proved that f5 is um, actually uh, losing uh, but there were also Soviet theoreticians uh, which study Akiba Rubinstein games very intensively and they prove that um, it's actually also a drawing. So um, the point is h5 can be played now. And now if f4, then we would have h6. Very dangerous move. And now after a6, a3, a5, a4, knight d8 actually black would have no moves now look at this black cannot move the king has to stay so knight on d8 is the only move g4 now knight e6 of course it can be taken because the the pawns are storming on the g and h files so knight on e6 f3 consolidating here knight d8 and now g5 and now we know already that knight e6, g6, h takes on g6, h7, and white would easily win. So this is why uh, after h5, black can't play f4. They have to go for h6. And now um, a4, a5, and now g3. G3, it's very important, G3. F4 would be draw, but G3 gives actually white some winning chances. So G3, knight D8. Now F3, preparing the G4. Now knight on E6, and now G4. And now the Polish theoreticians um, just said that uh, black is um, losing after uh, picking up, and he was actually right. And after knight on d8, we would have the same situation. So um, definitely losing because now white can promote and then promote again uh, on d8. So uh, he would be right. The problem is uh, black actually could win after f4. And now the black is winning. So look at this. Now black is winning. After g5, nothing works h takes on g5 h6 king f6 and that's uh, totally enough for you know stopping uh, white and of course winning uh, because white can't do anything uh, knight can can take uh, of course and after g4 uh, black are just faster so f takes on g4 and f3 g5 even king g6 and king c7 f2 and of course it's all too late black promote to queen and win the game so that would be interesting stuff that f5 is also um drawing for black however the point is it's it's really complicated but that would be a some kind of trap for for white so white would have to uh, play very carefully so maybe that was the idea to you know uh try to win this way however Rubinstein went straight for h5 he didn't want any complications uh, h5 is like uh, you know pretty obvious move now blocking uh, h pawn and here white have to be uh, still careful for example if if white tried to play something like g4 that would be crazy h on g4 h5 f5 h6 king f6 
and black is winning again. So uh, it's very similar situation. Of course, uh, black king can pick up um, uh, the, the pawn and the knight also can uh, pick up the pawn on d8. And uh, white king, of course, don't have the time to, to go for the, for the knight. This knight is guarding uh, these two squares. So uh, not an option. So f3 was played um, uh, by Oldrich Duras. Um, very experienced, very, very good move. And here we have f5. So stopping this g4. And now we have g3. a5, a4, knight d8. And here we have king c7, knight f7, king c8, knight d6. So Rubinstein try a couple of checks but after king c7 knight f7 king c8 uh, knight d8 king c7 and knight e6 with check uh both of players agreed to a draw so who that was harsh that was uh at least for me that was difficult i tried when i tried to prepare this game uh, all these lines are you know i didn't show all the lines but I showed these most interesting uh, lines and some of the lines which were, uh, you know, shown by uh, by some theoreticians uh, already like 50 and 70 years ago when they analyze um, uh, the endings of Akiba Rubinstein. So really crazy stuff here. Uh, and that's not the end. Now, OK, feel free to, you know, uh, just go to your to your stuff. Don't watch anymore because I'm going to show you uh, even more endings. Even this is uh, ended already. But what would happen if the players try actually to win? For example, uh, king on d6, what would happen? Uh, white, of course, would uh, just uh, get the queen promoted. And after exchanging, we would have king on c5. King e7. There is a lot of calculations. So what do you think? Who's going to win here? King b4, king f6. King a4, king f5. Which one looks more scary? Looks like black are OK here. King b4. Now we would have g4. h takes on g4. f takes on g4. a4. And now g5. If you go with the h uh, pawn and of course uh, white would lose because black controls h8 square so uh, g5 uh, a3 g6 a2 g7 and promotion to queens and now a uh, queen on f1 so if white go for example to the center then we would have queen on e2 king on f6 uh, queen on f2 and uh, now the, the pawn would be attacked. And if the pawn is defended, then, um, you know, just uh, losing the queen after the x-ray. So that would not be the option. So because of um, uh, this position of the queen, uh, actually black would get the, the draw. So that would be the draw, even black try. And actually that was, you know, that would be very risky. So this is why Akiba Rubinstein, of course, didn't play. From the other hand, um, there are some analyses in the books, in the old books. So a lot of, uh, you know, grandmasters uh, analyzed this, that they wrote the books in this, uh, about this game. And they gave um, the, you know, uh, idea that King F6 also would be drawn. And they show this line. So uh, promotion to the queen, knight, knight takes on d8, king stay on d8, and now king, king e5. And king e7 is like considered as a strong move. So uh, let's, let's see what would happen after king on e7. We would have f4, g takes on f4, king take on f4, now king f6, king on f3. King g5, and now black king, of course, is too late. So king on e4, king takes on h5. It looks pretty scary, uh, but now we would have king on f5, and here king h6, king f6, h5, king f7, king g5, king g7, 
and now white can run and win this pawn and the game but do they uh, so king f5 king h6 king e5 king h5 and now king d5 king g5 king c5 king f5 king b5 and now important uh, black would have to go this way so king on e6 king a5 king d7 king b6 and now king c8 and this is draw so uh, black just go to the corner and is of course known the draw the problem is in this position uh, where king e5 was played uh, king e7 is not really the strongest move actually white can win and i will show you how king on c7 f4 pretty similar g takes on f4 king take on f4 king b6 and now black don't have time to pick up on f3 if you calculate uh, precisely king g3 king a5 king h4 king b6 who gonna be faster can you calculate king g3 and yes white two three four moves black one two three four moves so again uh, both of the sides would have the queens and actually black queen could just pick up the, the pawn very easily so that would be a draw the problem is uh, if you have stockfish you can analyze this easier f4 that's the move and this is insane now if black uh, actually want to pick up this uh, this pawn then one two three four and controlling h1 so black would never uh, make the queen and of course white would win the game so uh, that's pretty interesting so h4 would have to be played and black can promote first now if white play this pawn but white actually can play f5 and now h3 f6 h2 f7 h1 queen and the same on f8 queen and now uh it looks like drawish but actually it's uh, this time can be won uh white can win and here is the way queen b1 check king a5 now queen e1 check now queen b4 queen e5 check king a6 queen e6 check queen b6 uh, queen c4 check queen b5 queen c8 check king a7 queen c7 check and now king on a8 and this is the place uh, where white king actually uh, can be can't be uh, checked anymore because any check would you know come with the queen on b8 and that would come with check so black would be forced to exchange the queens and of course white would just promote the pawn so queen f7 would have to be played or anything similar a5 and for example um, queen f3 but now queen b7 uh, and now there is nothing can be done queen c3 a6 uh, for example king f4 a7 king f5 and now king b8 and now there is another part of this um, endings uh, how to win by white there is uh, you know have to do promotion somehow so after queen on e5 both of sides have to be really careful and calculate very very well queen c7 uh, queen on b5 now king on c8 queen on e8 king on b7 queen on b5 queen b6 queen d7 and now king on a6 queen c8 king b5 queen d7 with check and now king on a5 queen d2 checking from that side and now king on a6 and there are no more checks actually there are no more useful checks because any check um, for example 
here or here would be met with the with the check so and and the same of course from from this side so that would be the same uh so queen on g2 the only square controlling a8 but now queen c5 so now white would start to get initiative queen e6 or, or or wherever and now white just get to the eighth rank with check and that means king f6 that means winning for white so uh interesting stuff that uh, one of the uh, endings with the queen would be you know one uh, but one would be just pretty drawish so uh this is beauty of the of the end game so i hope you enjoy that and and i and you don't have much headache about that in this position actually both players agreed to a draw so both of them become the uh, you know winners of the 1905 uh, Hauptturnier in barman okay and this time is really the end so thanks for watching if you like this end game just press like if you don't like it just press on like but leave the comment what do you think uh if that makes sense for you uh, if you enjoy or not and and why and if you want to see more of akiba rubinstein end games and just you know press subscribe and uh, bell button of course and yeah thanks for watching and see you in the next one